If you were on a Dan Snyder a show, would you put your kids on a Dan Snyder TV series? I would would say yes. Nickelodeon star Chris Massey from Zoe 101 joins Raven Simone and Miranda Pear on their podcast to discuss their childhood being in the industry. Yeah, we're okay. spilling tea today, right? You reached out to us. You said, hey you guys, I have some tea to spill. Cool, cool. We like come, <laughs> really come, tea. come spill the tea on spill tea the time. Tea. So you know, they start the podcast off, Chris and Raven stating the fact that they both grew up as child actors. So they felt comfortable weighing in on the subject after this documentary came which Raven and her wife seen, but Chris didn't. We're actually gonna be talking about a documentary that recently came out called Quiet On Set. Who better to have than you two to talk about the <laughs> You know, she's experienced being a child star. I know what it's like being on a Nickelodeon sitcom. I haven't watched the documentary. I will let that be known. We I watched it. We did. So Chris Massey goes on to explain that he auditioned for the role of Zoe 101 when he was 13, and he ended up getting hired on the show at 14, at the exact same time that his brother Kyle Massey ended up on That So Raven. It's very unfortunate what happened to Drake Bell, because that's someone that I know personally. So even for me to hear that, that was shocking. You were hired um, as what character on Zoe 101? Played Michael Barrett on Zoe 101. We had a lot of fun. I mean, you know, I mean, we were kids. His <laughs> brother plays my brother. Yeah, I was yeah. Gonna say, Raven. Was gonna say Kyle yeah. Massey yeah. was mm -hmm. on that Zoe Raven. Yeah. So Chris and Raven go on to say that their parents were very strict. They needed to be on the fucking set. They needed to be seeing what their kids are doing and who's around their kids. My mom, my dad, they were on set. Yep. No matter what. It's a really touchy subject that people should understand that are familiar with being on on a set. Your mom and dad have full authority to be on set. And obviously that's gonna make a whole world of difference. It's basically pedo prevention. <laughs> there are some parents that are so mesmerized by the glitz and glamor. This person's gonna take care of my kid. And then there are other families yep. that say, if you touch my kid, I'm killing you. I know Raven's mom, dad, just like she knows my mom and dad. Chris even goes on to say that he could hear his parents' distinct voices laughing when there was audience laughter in the sitcom. Calm. Jamie Lynn's mom or dad was on set every day. I know their laughs. And I'm like, oh, that's my mom. That's how close they were on set. The rule on our set. It's an unspoken rule. What they would do is the person who would say, hey, you got to go to hair and makeup. The same person, he would come in, he would say, we need you to hair and makeup and then you got to go to set. Right after he would get me from the school trailer, he would go to my trailer, tell my dad, hey, Chris is going to set. So, I mean, while I understand what Chris is saying, you know, parents were notified, staff took them from hair and makeup to set but you know these people are in the building for hours and hours throughout the day i'm sure there's chances for kids to get away from their parents and be near somebody they shouldn't be right because we definitely have worked with people whose parents did not We're bring not. them to set yeah, exactly we've worked with those people yeah. one thing that really irks me is that child actors and children in entertainment aren't protected under federal laws so raven goes on to explain that there is federal laws for like child labor but kids in entertainment is actually exempt the team Teacher on the set has like the highest authority. People don't know that. When you're on a kid's set, your teacher can come and pull you off that set and say, hey, look, he's got to do math homework. And she can shut the whole production down. Yeah. Doesn't like some and some of them and use it. Recognition. Yeah, some, some do. of them and don't. Some, but at the end of the day, school comes first. So yeah, there's also teachers that have high authority according to Raven and Chris. But like Raven goes on to say, not all of them are as forward and controlling. You have young people accumulating thousands of dollars a mm -hmm. week sometimes kids are making more money than their parents. Yeah. The psyche most of the time, I'm sorry. Most, yeah, most of the time. Yeah. Knowing that your child is making more money than you mm -hmm. and that you have to make things work because it then becomes your livelihood can only be, for lack of a better word, a mind. And yeah. yeah, I think Raven makes a good point there. You know, if the parents are relying on their kid for most of their income, they're probably going to turn their blind eye in a lot of situations and they probably don't want to stand up to authority too much on set because it could be the difference between their kid getting the next role or not. And um, you'd be surprised how greedy parents are and how much stuff they'll ignore for a bag. Looking at the documentary, one thing that I saw really did feel like Dan Schneider was kind of dismissive of his male black characters. Me and Kyle always joke about this. I'm like, you were on the one all black show with the one white cast member and I was on the all white cast member and I was the only black <laughs> <one>. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess at least they had that all black cast for That's a Raven. For Nickelodeon, it was, I guess it was just the token black. You guys had Chelsea and they had me. <laughs> you know? 
I never felt excluded. He did a really good job of making it like friends for teenagers. That's kind of what our show was, right? Yeah. It was like, we're always sitting around a big table. We're all eating together. We're all like hanging out together. So, I mean, Chris is really making it out to seem like Dan Schneider was pretty inclusive. By the sounds of it, wasn't being too racist or anything like that. Getting all the kids to hang out and have fun with one another. When I see that people say like, even the thing like toxic work environment, I'm not here to defend anyone. You know, I'm just here to say what my truth is. Yeah. And you know, some people might call Chris a Dan Schneider defender or something like that, but I think it's fair if a guy had a good experience on set to be able to say that he did. And you know, like he said, he does feel for the people who were mistreated on set. We grew up in a way where certain people can get upset or angry or lash yeah, out exactly sometimes. Right. But for me- It's not toxic. It's not toxic. <laughs> My dad was a Marine and you know, he was very strict, very stern, but he was loving, fun, but he was very stern and strict with us. Okay, so I think there's definitely a huge difference between discipline from your parents and then discipline as a minor on a set. There's a reason you can't work at McDonald's at like age 14 and why it's such a gray area when you're younger working on set. For me, when someone would say, hey, you got get your shit together we gotta we gotta go for me it was okay let me learn my lines let me focus let's get this moving because we're on a schedule when you're dealing with kids we're flirting with each other we're telling jokes and sometimes you can lose track of this is work i understand that the director needs to keep you on track and make sure that they're getting the most work out of you as they can legally but i don't think that excuses screaming at people or being rude to people we're losing sunlight because you gotta think my show filmed outside as well so it's like when you're losing sunlight they're like we can't film this tomorrow. I witnessed him be upset when when things were going wrong, but so does every boss, so does every manager. If you're gonna say that someone yelling is a toxic environment, you have to look at all sports, all coaches. That's very toxic. <laughs> I guess that's just subjective. Maybe Chris is fine with another adult that's not his father screaming at him. And there's nothing wrong with being a little strict, but we don't know how strict these people are being to each individual person. Totally understand what you're saying, and I agree. I grew up in a household where aggressive words were not to bring you down, but to build you up. What I think the documentary is showing the toxicity is the fact that he was asking for massages from people. He was not creating a safe environment for an actor under the age of 18. I'm really glad Raven and Miranda kind of stepped in to speak on other things than just being rude on set because there was Alexa Nicholas being in the changing room, Dan Schneider being like a wall away from her, deciding what outfit she's wearing and taking Polaroid pictures of her with like a swimsuit and just walking away with it. There's Jamie Lynn Spears and Britney kind of teaming up on Alexa and asking staff members for massages, getting them to do weird ass dares and then not paying them. Don't even get me started on all the weird sexual innuendos that they threw in on different episodes of different shows. I think that the people who were coming forward clearly had really negative encounters and felt very unsafe. Regardless of how you were raised, when we're at work, the hope is everyone feels safe. Kids were being required to do really uncomfortable things that they didn't like. One of the boys had to get into a nude colored suit and be covered in peanut butter and licked by dogs. These oddly kind of we're making it fun and playful because it's kids. See, I think that's more of a Hollywood problem there is just people getting away with doing creepy and weird stuff on set. Yeah, sure, back in the day it was accepted and now it's not. But I mean, whose fault is that, you know? It's the people turning a blind eye. Take some goddamn responsibility instead of saying times were different, you know? People were a lot more tolerant mm -hmm. then than they are now. And if you go back mm -hmm. to the beginning of television, you could not do the things that, you, oh, know, yeah. you know, you can't do them now. And I think it's worth acknowledging too a lot of wonderful experience comes from this career yes. you meet a lot of amazing people and there are a lot of fantastic people on you create set friendships for life you create for friendships life, for yeah. life but with every good there is some bad it's fair to come to a conclusion that you made friends and you had a good time on set but the people who experience the weird stuff definitely have to endure that for the rest of their life so i don't know if the pros outweigh the cons but anyway they go on to explain like the me too movement kind of creating new standards but then they talk about the devil's standards of being a young male there were women that were older than me that yeah. i was yeah, yeah, yeah. you know having interactions with that probably should not have happened because i was a kid and i'm like oh this this girl wants me. But then you realize when you get older, it's like for men, they look at it as more of like a- Trophy. A, it's more of a cool thing. Or if you come forward and say, this woman touched me inappropriately when I was six, 14, 15, or wanted to have sex 
with me, then it's like, you're gonna tell on her? Yeah, I totally agree with him. I think there's still a huge double standard in that field. People still find it really cool when a teacher R words a student. They're like, oh man, where was that teacher at when I was younger? Like, what the f it's easy to look in retrospect about how cool it would be, but it's a lot harder looking forward when it actually happened to you as a kid. You are a father, because I just want to yes. let everybody know where you are now and how your life is going. Yeah. Some people were not mentally strong enough to accept when their reign is over, right? When their superstardom has now dwindled to, yeah. oh, hey, you're the guy from, hey, I used to love that show. Yeah. Certain people who are addicted to the, the lights and the action and everything they can't dial it back and be live a normal life so those are some interesting points that they make all that dopamine all that excitement all the fans eventually it fades away some people can't handle that mentally that's why you have some of your fallen disney stars i don't have to necessarily have the same fame as someone yeah. i can still succeed in this industry i just have to pivot some parents are so helicoptery that even as i become an adult you won't go away and let me live my own life because of this yeah. some parents disappear fully and not help the child grow mentally to where they can't take care of themselves right. and then you see the people fall. And then Raven makes the point that some parents are better at helping their kid ease into adulthood than others. Some just take the money and ignore their kid and then that's when they can end up pretty mentally messed up too. You have to protect your child at all times. I'll say this, someone asked me, it was like, well, you were on a Dan Snyder show, would you put your kids on a Dan Snyder TV series? My answer was, if my child experienced the exact same thing that I experienced on the set, I would would say yes. So Chris goes on to say that if his kid wanted to be a star just like he was, he would be happy to throw him into Nickelodeon with Dan Schneider, which in one sense, it's like, yeah, he had a great time on there. Apparently nothing happened with him, but it is kind of interesting considering a lot of other actors had a completely different experience, especially fucking Drake Bell. Chris actively knows what happened to Drake Bell and he would still feel safe gambling his son. You would be there with your kid to I'm make sure that experience there the happened. way my dad was on set. There are so many things in place now that were not in place when we were actually acting. Mm. Before every season, every single sitcom, especially with children, there is a mandatory health and safety meeting through lawyers to mm. explain what quid pro quo is, to explain what mm. diversity is about. Mm -hmm. These meetings are brand new. And there's mm -hmm. things that you're like, obviously, but obviously that did not happen with Dan Schneider. So I think to wrap this up, I think the real moral of the story is First of all, pedophiles suck. Go away. Uh, and two, parents need to be there for their kids more. You shouldn't just trust groups of adults to be guardianship over your child. I mean, when you send them to a public or private school, the whole labor board's job is to keep kids safe. But when you're on like a TV set, there's a lot of gray areas because the staff aren't paid to be a mentor. They're there to run a show. You gotta be fucking Hawkeyes on your kid. But anyway, that is the news for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. You guys know the drill. Ta-ta for now.